Hi, I'm Tony Escueda from Yamaha, and I'm here in Nashville at the Summer Nam Show showing the new Montage synthesizer from Yamaha. So this is a Montage 8. We have three different models. We have a Montage 6, which is a 61 key synth action. We also make a Montage 7, which is the 76 key synth action. And this is the Montage 8, which is an 88 weighted key synthesizer. Actually, everything that was in a, uh, a, a Motif XF, those sounds are in here, and there's much, much much more. So a lot of the things that you used to have to expand a motif to do, this actually has built into it. So there's built in flash from memory, so you can load in some of your own content. Some of the new technologies that are in this that we have not had in the keyboard in a while, for one, is there's also an FM tone generator built into the system, but it's an FM X engine. So it's actually an enhanced form of what we did in the DX because it has more operators, you have more options, more features and parameters in it. And so you can take and use this in addition to the AWM2 engine engine, which is kind of like our premier uh, synthesizer uh, sample playback engine. You have a minimum of 256 notes of polyphony you can garner uh, with uh, the montage. There's a lot of controls and a lot of lights. So one of the other things you'll notice that kind of comes from the motif is we still have our assignable function buttons down here. You'll see we also have a large knob in the middle here we are calling the super knob, right? And then uh, there's also an engine in here that generates uh, uh, kind of behavior, motion, called uh, motion sequencing. And uh, motion sequence is basically I have different little tidbits of information. In some cases, maybe it's a, a panning movement. Maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a, 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 a filter changing something like that. I can go ahead and have it do some automated things, change it with the super knob, start and stop it, hold the position of what the motion sequence is doing with these buttons. I also have eight scene buttons for every performance as well. So I can for every particular sound collection I have in here, I can actually save up to eight different snapshots of everything that's going on in the sound at one time. It could be something simple as changing what particular sound I'm playing at a time or changing what the sound is doing at a particular point. So one of the things I have here is a sound called RD1 Gallery. So it's something simple like an electric piano sound. We have actually five different electric piano sounds here where I'm only ever playing really one at one time. So in this case, this is kind of emulating maybe one of the earlier, uh, one of the earlier electric pianos that uses a time. In the earlier electric pianos, they were constructed differently, where the hammers were covered with rubber, or maybe they were all rubber at one point. Different things. So you'll notice as I go up and down the keyboard, it has a different... This one is a different electric piano altogether. Same type of technology, but maybe it's a few years later. Notice the hammer sound a little different as opposed to the previous one. Maybe we'll go a few more years into the future with it. A little bit more rubbery sound in there with the hammers. It's a rounder sound up here. It's a softer, higher end than up here. And then here, this would be more representative of maybe like one of the last Fender piano that was made, or the Reed, or I mean the Tyne type piano. The other thing we also managed to sample and record so you can use it for performance is what that electric piano sounded like when it wasn't amplified. Because those type of electric pianos all had their own intrinsic noises and behaviors that went along with that, right? So this same passage sounded like this. You hear more noise of the mechanism, but the tone is still there. So we've made it so that you can actually combine. You want to take and control maybe this sound. Maybe add more noise. So that's like maybe a simple way of what you're going to do with the scene. Maybe if you're doing dance music, you want it so that when you go to one scene, your arpeggiator is playing a drum beat, where other places it's not. So when you want to play...
thing. Acoustic is, I can take one sound and kind of be in command of that sound. So I want to create a sound that makes it sound like the guitar is doing like a hammer on sliding up by just hitting the key harder. But the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure and I want to vibrate with that sound. I want to create some type of vibrato, subtle thing. I can push in on the key and use aftertouch. assignable function buttons. They can be other different types of guitar behavior sounds. Maybe it's more like a palm muted or maybe a harmonic. This becomes a, not just a keyboard sound, a guitar keyboard sound, but a very expressive instrument on itself that allows me to... So if I want to create a, you know, a really nice sounding uh, just melodic passage with it where I get the sound to change and I shape it, as if I just play a melodic line, like... pedal here. column of air is changing. So what better way to do it than take something that is incrementally changing. So I can have one sound here, and then a different sound here, and a different sound here. But besides having those, I get everything in between. about this interface is it's very easy to add sounds. So if I want to take and add maybe like a large string sound on top of it, I can go here and you'll see I have a touch screen once again. If I hit plus, now it just takes me to that interface we've all known from the motif, category search, right? So I can go in here and say, oh, I want to go to the strings category and I want to find some type of ensemble string sound. And then I've added, I've just added a whole string sound to this and I can change what I want to be the volume of that. like all of our sense is going to respond velocity. I can even change this particular sound with the button or use the foot switch. Maybe have it so it's more cotto. But the nice thing about this is that brass ensemble that I was playing is still dwelling underneath there and they're playing softly. But then when I want them to creep out into the forefront, I can simply push the pedal now. They can be back here with behind the strings, in front of the strings. I can create this expressive kind of dynamic layer back and forth. If I want to add another sound, I'll take this and I'll add, let's go ahead and add a percussion sound. So we'll go in here and 
We'll put a timpani sound in there. I have this touch screen. I'm just going to tell it I want the highest note on that timpani because I don't I don't want timpani up here. I want the timpani to maybe stop like here. And now I don't have any timpani here. Here, got it all I want, right? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the amount of reverb on my biggest sounds here, especially the timpani, so I can get that kind of thunder of God sound going on there. So I can change just exactly what the, see this shows me the level right there. So very easy to take and create a large ensemble sound with basically three presets here. Supernov technology. It could be for traditional instruments, it could be for dance, synthesis, all those type of things. But the key is lots more synthesizer in here, lots more different ways you can take and use that. Uh, whether you're a church player, whether you're doing soundtracks, whether you're doing dance music, uh, there's just a wealth of different things in here. You want to use the motion control, there's a lot of great stuff in here that shows you all really great landscape type sounds to give you. So you see different parameters have been automated that are moving in motion. And if I, if I like this particular sound, and at some point I want that motion to stop, I can actually hold it, and then it stays in that position. Back in. You might want to play a sound and then change to a different sound. So this also has another feature called seamless sound switching. So if I'd like to, I could take a, maybe this string ensemble sound. Right now, there's 1,920 different sounds to go through. That's a lot, right? There's an audition button, and every sound has a demo, so that you can kind of get an idea of what the scope is of the sound. It'll show you everything that it does with the knobs or the scenes of its program. on YamahaSynth.com, there's a program where you can just bulk your stuff up there and it will convert it into that. All the stuff that you would have, would have heard. And then every sound does something with the knob, with the buttons. So once you sit in front of one, whether it's a lead sound or whatever it is, you take it and try. Maybe the ribbon that does something with it. Um, the other thing that's really slick in here is in this category search, if I want to look for, I want to look for all the sounds that have the word metal in the title. Metal. Anything that's got the word metal in the title in here, boom, all those sounds show up. There's a, a audio input in the back here, just like in the motifs, you can use this as a vocoder if you want. This has a USB output that will do MIDI and audio synchronization, so you can do 32 mono stems, 16 stereo stems out of this, which you can store and load in your data through a USB uh, storage device. And then you have the ability, just like the motif, you have four pedal jacks, your standard MIDI in and out through. The ADM put, and actually 
speak code via MIDI, and you can actually you can hook up like a drum machine or something else, and it actually has the ability to do beat detection. So you want to sync an audio signal to your arpeggiator or the clock in here, you can do that. So there's a lot of really cool synth possibilities for being able to do multiple things with arpeggiator, timing from an audio device, uh, signal processing, and so on. Excellent. Thanks, Sean.